Apophis is an asteroid that was discovered in 2004. Mm -hmm. It was named Apophis after a very uh, destructive Egyptian god, very dark force. Uh, probably no coincidence that it was named that. And the funny part about that, there's a couple elements. One, scientists, despite giving it the name of Apophis, now have basically downgraded the chances of it threatening Earth to one in 330,000, the NASA scientists, that is. Mm -hmm. I said it was officially discovered in 2004. Here's where we get to the kind of proof that scientists not only demand, but cannot escape from. And that is, as early as 1976, Meyer wrote and published a kind of poetic descri description of this, what they called meteor, coming to hit the Earth. In 1981, he had a contact conversation with a man who uh, we know as Quetzal mm -hmm. in this body of work. And Quetzal told him that this meteor is coming. It is going to hit this Earth, specific area. Mm -hmm. It's going to be enormously destructive. And Billy's saying, well, uh, why don't you deflect it? And he said, you know, we can't, but your scientists have to come together on Earth in a specific way to deflect this meteor. Otherwise, you're going to be enormously damaged. Everybody listening to our interview, watching our interview, the majority of people would be affected by this. So here's the part of it that makes it inescapable. In 1991, after the informal publication by Meyer, mm -hmm. this transcript was reproduced in a book in German, copyrighted and published. In 2001, mm -hmm. it came out in a book called And Yet They Fly. Library of Congress, copyright. I have that book. OK, well, that's three years before it's officially discovered. That is something you can't wiggle out of. Now, there's another element. I mean, there's many levels of this that are interesting, but when you try to argue with copyrights, forget it. But then again, people say, well, why is it called the Red Meteor? Let me give a little background side note for people that might not know. In 1978, Meyer foretold another asteroid was coming. He said it was going to be called Tutatis. Mm -hmm. In 1989, that asteroid was not only discovered, but people named it Tutatis. We have the copyrighted book from 78 that Meyer published it. And now how did he know, number one, that this thing was coming and what it would be named 11 years later? And then the real question is, well, why did he call Apophis the red meteor? Just a few days ago, a young Austrian physicist wrote mm -hmm. me. And this is where you come into the, the domain of Carl Sagan, and uh, SETI and all these other places where they say, if extraterrestrials really exist and are out there and want to make contact with us, they should do it in a universal language that we all understand like mathematics. Mathematics. Right? That'd be perfect. Yes. Seeming. However, young Austrian physicist Anton Hanekamp writes me and says, I was looking into something called the Torino scale. Mm -hmm. The Torino scale was created by scientists at a meeting in Tor Turin or Torino, Torino, Italy, and it's a method of categorizing the level of threat, of danger, of incoming objects. Mm -hmm. They have a numerical scale, scale from 0 to 10, 0 being least, 10 being most. But what Hanekamp noticed was the correlation isn't just in the numbers. There is a visual color coordination from white to green, to yellow, to orange, to red. The universal symbol for mm -hmm. danger. So they describe it as the red meteor. Right. As a, a synonym for dangerous meteor. Right. To take us all out. Yeah, and by mentioning that, you also would bring us back to saying, well, wait a minute, supposedly it's an asteroid. But the, um, there's a division of, uh, it's a scientific division, at American Academy of Sciences or Astronomers or something, and they said, I, I was searching online, and they said that Apophis meets the criteria of an LL chondrite meteorite. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing to remember here, there is no wiggle room. Why do I say that? We know that Meyer published the outside date is 91. The Torino scale wasn't invented until 1995. Mm -hmm. That means that the extraterrestrials not only spoke to us in the simplest of universal languages, they foresaw that scientists on Earth would create 
that scale with the color language. So they wouldn't have to worry about mathematics because every man, woman, and child, every animal seeing red has that reaction. We are conditioned it's a universal symbol for universal for danger. For danger. Yeah. So that is established. That's in there. Plus, they describe it as the meteor to give us the clue additionally because a meteor or a meteorite only describes an object that makes impact with the Earth. Not that is floating around in space and flies by. When it makes impact with the Earth, it's a meteorite or part of a meteor. So we have inescapable scientific proof, communication from more advanced intelligences speaking the simplest and plainest of language to say, this is coming, it's dangerous, and it will hit your Earth unless you come together and prevent it. Was that the Hanak prophecies that that was from? No. Or was, this was later? This was actually, uh, as I say, first as a poetic form in 76, then 81. Around 1981, which you may not know, was an earlier publication mm -hmm. of a chunk of the Hanak prophecies, too. Okay. The interesting thing, and I'm glad you brought up the mm -hmm. Hanak prophecies, is I went back to them, and I looked, and they're pretty severe and intense, and they foretell things, some of which have already happened, mm -hmm. and some of which we only hope won't. I didn't see the meteor striking. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm so excited about it is because you have a network, you have an audience of people. We, the advice in throughout all the Meyer material, with the exception of the specific advice from the play Arn, that your scientists must come together and create something to deflect this. And they tell us how with a nuclear weapon, and the Russians apparently read it and are now wanting to bring scientists together to do it. But it's the ground level, grassroots, you, me, and the people that are your audience who can apply the pressure socially so this doesn't go away. We don't forget about it because of the Super Bowl or the next anything else. Mm -hmm. So we need to nuke the apocalypse. Bottom no, line. no, actually, not or nuke it. Hit it on the hit it up and deflect it off course. We need to explode a nuclear device within a specific proximity to this, you know, eleven hundred foot, three hundred mm -hmm. some meter, within a range whereby the shock wave of a true nuclear explosion will deflect it from its course. Okay. They said obviously, and our scientists would understand this and probably do that if you if you blow it up, you're going to have a shower of deadly. Yeah, meteorites hitting the Earth, and that would be horrible too. Didn't Bruce Willis do that one time? Well, that's the thing. It, things like this always seem like they've got to be like some kind of a Bruce Willis movie, because we're not really geared to understand the magnitude and reality of things like this we've mm -hmm. never seen in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. 